Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Poddar. Now, amendments to the competition law have been passed by the Parliament and the Competition Commission of India is in the process of making detailed guidelines based on these amendments. Now, these change rules will change the way India does deals, mergers and acquisitions and firms compete with each other in the marketplace. So, the key highlights include low deal value threshold for CCI submission at 2,000 crore rupees, expediting the approval process, DG's enhanced powers on search and seizure, open market purchases before CCI approval, control definition change to material control, hub and spoke cartel being introduced, penalty becomes harsher and settlement and compensation introduced. Now to put all this into perspective and especially to throw light on what's new in the final amendments compared to what was proposed we have with us two senior legal experts joining me on the show, Pallavi Shroff and Amit Sibbal. Thank you so much, uh, both of you, for joining us and welcome to CNBC TV 18. Now, Pallavi, let's start with you. While a lot has been discussed on the amendments when they were proposed, there are new areas of concern and technicalities that have really emerged after seeing the final bill which has been passed by the parliament on the deal threshold especially. So what do you think is the intent here? Is it digital deals to be covered more effectively? I ask you because some of the corporates feel that uh, it will bring a large number of deals under the CCI scanner and also having the parliament to really legislate on this threshold takes away any flexibility on the amount. So, yes, Nisha, I think that this deal value, the deal value threshold criteria is a new criteria which has come in, under which uh, we don't know how they will define deal value. It is defined to mean any form of consideration, whether direct or indirect, whether deferred or not. But I think we need more clarity on that definition, certainly. The other aspect is that the target must have substantial business in India. Now, if you're looking at foreign to foreign deals, I think that could be one way of saying how many will deals will come in. But what happens to Indian companies acquiring Indian companies when they already have substantial sort of you know business in India? Well, we don't know what that substantial business definition will be. And uh, will this in any way try to deal, take away the smaller deals, which really don't need to come to the CCI? I think that's a question that's still open. The second issue is when we were debating this earlier in the Competition Law Review Committee, um, the idea was that there were several deals, particularly in the digital uh, markets, uh, and the tech sector, which were not uh, being scrutinized by the CCI because they didn't meet the thresholds or they covered under the yes. de minimis uh, exemption. So yes. I think this is really to cover all such deals, uh, you know. And I agree the deal value is ridiculously low. Yes. And, you know, all right. So it's not to stand the test of time. I think before we start implementing this, they will need to change the deal value threshold. I mean, the number. Oh, you think that there will be a revisit on this? No, it is so. I hope so. Now the law is passed, so it can't be no, unless no. they want to use the provision in the act where they say every two years you can relook at the thresholds mm. and change the number, you know. So, so my understanding from the former CCI chairman when this uh, amendment was proposed was that let them all at least notify and not all will be really assessed by CCI, but at least we will not miss out on several deals which are going unnoticed just because they are managing to be way below in terms of deal value. So that was the understanding given, but I must also say that the turnover uh, impact uh, or threshold that was given earlier has managed to pass um, one very large uh, you know, um, uh, deal and a merger in the exhibition space which uh, ideally uh, should have come under the CCI purview if that, uh, you know, they had not matched that one particular criteria of turnover being below the threshold value. Uh, Avit Sibyl, jump in on this uh, very interesting part to really deal with. What do you think about the deal threshold? What are your clients now saying? One way that it could have been approached, Nisha, could have been to have a higher deal threshold value 
at the moment it's uh, roughly the equivalent 2000 crores is roughly 250 to 300 million dollars now they could have had it a little higher so that it would be sustainable over time and then used the exemption provision under section 54 if they felt that uh, uh, you know they wanted to exp exempt smaller deal sizes uh, but that's not the approach uh, that's been taken uh, I, I think the the uh, there's not much that they can do at this point since it is now cast in the provision hmm. uh, but what they what they can look at is is having regulations on the two aspects that Pallavi touched upon. That is, what is meant by deal value? Uh, because we need clarity on that. When yes. you have a merger transaction, and an acquisition or an amalgamation, it can come in various shapes and forms. It can be, for example, a share swap. So how will you decide what is the deal value? It may, it may not be a simple case of a $300 million uh, consideration. Consideration comes in various forms. People yes. tr uh, structure deals in light of Yes. The, this very provision and therefore you'll need need guidance and clarity on that right. and uh, secondly of course guidance is needed on what is uh, what is going to count as substantial business operations in india now obviously right. given that asset value and turnover are not under consideration in this particular new threshold that comes with the amendment you cannot have uh, guidance saying asset value or a particular turnover value to constitute substantial business operations in India. Otherwise, it yes. defeats the purpose of this provision. Yes. So you'll have to carefully look at what that is. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not easy to say what it should be. Uh, but for example, in the case of a, a company in the digital markets, you have to start right. looking at number of users looking at regulations that are specific to particular sectors. Yeah. No, that's right, uh, Amit. And in fact, uh, conjoining this with another very important aspect in terms of the definition that is really required from the CCI and its fine print is also the penalty. It will be now based on global turnover derived from all the products and services versus relevant turnover that you mentioned. Uh, so now penalty again will require to be not just defined, but in my view, it's become also much harsher than what was there in the proposed amendment. So uh, any any reflection on this, why this has been brought in? And does it have anything to do with the digital and big tech, which is looking at India for several acquisitions and a big play so india is trying to be a lot more protectionist in its mna game in this space so we were just talking now about merger control we are now moving to enforcement so if you just to put it in perspective if you have a violation of abuse of dominance or a violation under section 3 that is a cartel then how is the penalty to be calculated now it was earlier as per a Supreme Court judgment, that the penalty would be based on a particular percentage, as the CCI may decide, of the relevant turnover. In other words, it must be related to the violation in question. So if you're, if it's a cartel relating to a particular product, like aluminum phosphide tablets, then even if that entity produces other kinds of tablets, the turnover that will be levied, uh, will, will be the basis for the penalty, will be uh, aluminium phosphide tablets turnover for that particular year. That's now, it. essentially, what this amendment does is to reverse uh, the Supreme Court judgment. In other words, yes. it, it, it now says that, look, it will not be relevant turnover. It will be turnover of all products and services, and that too, it will be globally. Now, you asked about about the process this comes in just at the end it is not put to stakeholders for comment it is not subject matter of the standing committee's report and it comes in i i believe from the ministry right at the end so not an ideal process which has led to this outcome yes motivation part of it appears to be nisha certainly related to capturing turnover of of uh, digital market companies uh, where in fact you might have turnover that is outside of india and the part it's hard to define uh, yes. the turnover that is in india in fact with certain big companies in recent cases yes. uh, cci has alleged that they have not given the right numbers for india so to avoid i think that controversy is certainly part of the motivation uh, behind this amendment but having said that the amendment is not restricted 
to digital markets at all, and it will apply uh, to companies across the board. So if you have right. MNCs, for example, their global turnover is already in the picture. Yes. They may, when they do business in India, choose to structure their business in a way that they avoid that risk by uh, restricting the business of that particular company to a narrow sector so as to protect yes. the rest of their global turnover as a whole. Right. But of course, uh, you have Indian companies that are also MNCs and their global turnover may also be subject uh, to, to very important point there. Amendment. Very important point there made, uh, Amit, that now the structuring of the global companies when it comes to Indian operations could be really changed uh, to really comply with this rule and to, uh, you know, de-risk themselves from this particular rule coming in. Pallavi, uh, any words on uh, this? Anything to add? I think any this is, uh, yeah. you know, some countries do look at global turnover. Mm -hmm. But I think in this, my own view is that this has gone a little too far. I can understand if you're looking uh, at the global turnover of that product which you are investigating. But to look at global turnover of all uh, products or services that a company is manufacturing or selling is how is that even relevant? Because what are you trying to do? You are trying in a way, what was the theory of harm that you were looking at? That there was a, a market that was skewed by virtue of, uh, you know, the uh, cartel or whatever the damage that was done. And you were trying to rectify that and penalize for not behaving correctly. Now, right. how is that re global turnover relevant for what company A did in India? Yes, right. You know, so 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 this I is can something. And if they took India turnover, hmm. if at all, but global turnover, I think there is no harm caused globally. Yes, yes. No, uh, Pallavi. So that particular point was not up for discussion. And it has made its way in the bill. Yes. So CCI in its fine print will have to really define and uh, really articulate it uh, properly for the comfort of the companies which come under yeah, this. But this is, an, it, this is a way of getting over the decision of the Supreme Court in Excel Corp, yes. which yes. insisted that it is on the... So that proportionality you know. debate has been yes. uh, really taken Correct. off over here. All right, yes. so three Correct. important clarities that are required. Deal value clarity, how to define deal value for threshold to be defined. Then also uh, the business operations, substantial business operations in India, how is that Correct. defined? And the third one is also the global turnover. How is that going to be defined and whether it's legit in terms of really assessing them for their India operations? So these are three important clarifications sort but we'll discuss more about what else it comes in in the amendment which is going to impact the corporate world which is into deal making right after this short break on big deal stay tuned